Well, my name is John Maloney, and hopefully you can see my face because I got a vision problem, so I don't necessarily see it on my screen. But anyways, that being said, let's get started and talk about the creative problem solving process that was created by Alex Osborne in the late 1950s. And the book we are going to use as a reference, it's called Creative Leadership Skills That Drive Change by Puccio, Murdoch, and Mance, and this is the second edition of the book. So what is creative problem solving? Creative problem solving is a deliberate way to identify problems and predicaments, as well as to identify and utilize on opportunities. So before we get into the actual problem solving model, I would like to first point out that the authors talk about two types of thinking that you will be using throughout the model. Convergent and divergent thinking. And then after that, they talk about what they call a wild card. So divergent thinking is generating ideas, thinking outside of the box, um, being abstract, whatever terms you want to use for that. Uh, when you're thinking divergently, you don't want to make judgments on what you are discussing. You want to go for quantity of ideas. Also, you want to make connections. So perhaps one idea branches off into another idea and then branches off into another idea. That is okay. And then finally, you want to seek novelty. It's great to have novel and creative and crazy ideas in this stage because often these crazy creative novel ideas will actually create some novel solutions. Now, Kama, let's talk a bit about convergent thinking. So convergent thinking is once you've diverged and come up with as many ideas, generate as many options you can think about, then you want to look at convergent thinking. And this will allow you to rifle through those ideas and figure out what fits best in your situation. So four principles to keep in mind when thinking convergently are to apply affirmative judgment, which means look at the strengths of the ideas and not just the negatives. Keep novel ideas alive. And what this is about is when you've generated a bunch of your ideas. I'm sure some of them are novel. And these are ideas that you want to keep alive and try to work with in order to come up with some novel solutions to your predicament. Next one is check your objectives. And what this means is make sure that your ideas are in budget, they're in line with your organization's values, etc, etc. Then finally, keep focused. Keep focused on what you need to work on, keep focused on the goal, and keep focused on what your end results need to be. Then the wild card they talk about is allow for incubation. And basically, sometimes ideas need to sit. Sometimes people just spend too much time at the table, too much time in the boardroom on a particular idea, and they just need a break. So take that break, whether it's five minutes, whether it's 15 minutes, or whether it's an evening, to allow the ideas to incubate and potentially spawn forth even new, better, and more creative ideas. Uh, and just for uh, reference sake, um, these summaries can be found on page 107 and 108 of the text in regards to divergent, convergent, and wildcard thinking. So now let's talk about the creative problem solving model itself. So there are three phases of the model. They are clarification, transformation, and implementation. And within these three parts of the model, you have two steps or stages. Within the clarification part of the model, you have exploring the vision and formulating challenges. Within the transformation part of the model, you have exploring ideas 
and formulating solutions. And finally, within the implementation part of the model, you have exploring acceptance and formulating of a plan. And overarching to all this is a seventh part of the model, which is called assessing the situation. As the model is fluid, you can start and go between each phase and step of the model as needed. However, the first thing you want to do is assess the situation. You want to figure out where in the model you are at and assessing the situation will help you do this through using the various divergence and convergent tools listed in the book or other tools that you can come up with on your own. So again, the goal of assessing the situation is figure out where in the model you need to start. Now, when you look at the clarification phase of the model in exploring the vision, this is where you want to at the end, have a what's called a big, hairy, audacious goal or BHAG. Think big, think creative. Reach for the stars. The second part of the model is called formulating solutions. And this is where through using various divergent and convergent tools, you will figure out what is the main challenge for you achieving the goal? And you will formulate that into a statement, perhaps by using how can we or how can I? Then moving into the transformation part of the goal, we have two stages or steps known as exploring ideas and formulating solutions and exploring ideas this is where you do your brainstorming generating ideas and whatnot and then you will move into formulating solutions where you're going to evaluate some of the ideas so your goal for exploring ideas is to come up with some solutions that will fit your challenge statement and then when you move into formulating solutions, this is where you will evaluate what you have chosen and trim them down to maybe one or two ideas. And then finally, entering the implementation phase, you will assess assessment. And the goal here is to figure out who is going to be involved, who perhaps you need to please, uh, such as stakeholders or investors or employees of the company or anybody else impacted by the solution you are proposing. And then finally, you will go to formulating a plan. And this is where you come up with a plan of attack, per se. This is where you prioritize things. And this is where you say, OK, we're ready. We have a plan of action. Now we can work towards our solution. Before I end this video, I have a question. How do you know the creative problem solving method is right for you, your group, or your organization? There is an assessment tool in the book on page 129 called The Four Eyes. So briefly, I will discuss this assessment tool. The first I is influencers. Do the people bringing forth the problem have the authority and power to implement solutions that are decided upon during the problem solving process? Next is imagination. Do people have creative energies they want to use in imagining creative and novel solutions to their predicament. Next is interest. Are people interested in putting in the time it will take to go through the model and to come up with solutions that are generated throughout the problem solving process? And finally, immediacy. 
does the problem need to be solved immediately or within a short period of time? If you've answered yes to all these questions, then the problem solving model, or rather, the creative problem solving model is right for you. My name is John Maloney and I hope you enjoyed this video.